In this screencast on mass transfer, we will focus on analogies, penetration theory and boundary layer theory. But first we will revisit the two film theory and talk about overall mass transfer coefficients. And then we go into penetration theory, boundary layer theory and Reynolds analogy, which is a special case of Chilton Coburn's analogy. When we've dealt with the two film theory before, we have actually only done calculations where only one film limits the mass transport. So what happens if we have more than one film and if we use the two film theory? Well let's use steady state assumption. Then we can actually calculate an overall mass transfer coefficient. So what is that? Well let's try to remember what an overall heat transfer coefficient is. If you have a wall here, you have a temperature on the inside for example and a temperature on the outside and then a temperature on the wall there and a temperature on the wall there. You can define the heat conductivity here as the heat flux equals the heat conductivity divided by the thickness of the wall times the area times the temperature difference between the wall here and the wall there. Heat transfer coefficients, well that tells us the heat transfer from the inside here to the wall and from the wall to the outside. And if we use a steady state assumption, that is, we say that this Q equals this Q here, then we can calculate uh, the overall heat transfer coefficient defined by this equation here, where the heat transfer equals the heat transfer coefficient times the area times the temperature difference from one side to the other. Mass transfer coefficient, that's the coefficients here. And an overall mass transfer coefficient is a coefficient that takes us all the way from this side to the other. So let's derive a formula for the overall mass transfer coefficient k. The mass transfer to the surface, Na, equals a mass transfer coefficient times the area times the concentration difference, C1 minus the concentration at the wall. We have a mass transfer through the material, given by the diffusivity in the material and the thickness of the material, and again a concentration difference. And we have a mass transfer from the surface, another constant on the other side, times the concentration difference here and the area once again. And we define our new overall mass transfer coefficient through this equation down here where we have Na equals large K times A times the concentration difference from one side to the other. Okay, so we know that Na divided by K times A equals the concentration difference from one side to the other, but that concentration difference is the sum of this concentration difference plus this concentration difference plus that concentration difference, which means that Na divided by Ka equals Na divided by K1A plus Na delta divided by dA plus Na divided by K2A. And Na is constant since we have steady state and we have the same area. So we have now a formula for calculating overall mass transfer coefficient. Okay, so we're done with the two film theory time to do the penetration theory, boundary layer theory and Reynolds analogy. Penetration theory first. When we talked about the two film theory we said that the only thing that happens in the film is diffusion. In the penetration theory we instead consider both diffusion and convection. Close to the face boundary here we have a package that moves by convection and approaches the face boundary. Once it has arrived at the face boundary, it stays there for a while, and then the concentration gradient changes within this small volume. So this line here, the straight line here, is the concentration gradient before the contact, so it's just a constant. And then while it is in contact, the concentration here close to the boundary increases, while it remains fairly constant a bit away here. And then after a certain contact time this package moves away again from 
the face boundary. So what kind of situation is the penetration theory applicable to? One such situation is when you bubble some gas through a liquid. You will then have a reasonably well-defined contact time and you can calculate your mass transport according to this equation here. So you may note here that the contact time here is a one value only. If you instead have a situation where you have a distribution of contact times, you can have a, another equation for that and you find that in the compendium. In the boundary layer theory, we look at a situation where we have some kind of flow along some surface. So the flow is here going from the left to the right. But what we are interested here is the transport from the surface out. So orthogonal to the flow. In boundary layer theory, the mass transfer coefficient can be calculated by these equations here. So at laminar flow, we have k here, mass transfer coefficient, equals a constant times the diffusivity divided by at what point we measure the mass transfer coefficient. So if we go back again, the mass transfer coefficient will be different at this position than at this position here. So we have laminary flow here and the mass transfer coefficient changes and then we go into a turbulent boundary. And why does it become turbulent? Well, the thickness of the layer here increases. And if you think a bit about the Reynolds number, it has something to do with the characteristic length and this is this distance here and you get turbulent flow when you have a certain distance. Okay, so we have the diffusivity and the distance and then Reynolds number and Schmidt's number. What this means is that the Sherwood number simply equals 0 0.323 times Reynolds to the power of one half and Schmidt to the power of one third. For turbulent flow, we instead get Sherwood's number 0.292 and then different exponents for Reynolds number, the same actually for Schmidt. In the three theories we have talked about so far, the two film theory, the penetration theory and the boundary layer theory, we can find a relation between the diffusivity and the mass transfer coefficient. Now in Reynolds analogy and Chilton Compton's analogy, we have a slightly different situation. Reynolds analogy and Chilton Coburn's analogy tells us nothing about the relation between the diffusivity and the mass transfer coefficient. What it tells us is rather a relation between the mass transfer coefficient and the heat transfer coefficient, the mass transfer coefficient and the momentum transfer coefficient. So we have a situation with flow laminary flow from the left to the right here in the pipe and we're studying a small volume with a certain mass. There is a certain concentration in there. This mass has a certain temperature and it's moving to the right at a certain velocity v. As a comparison we have some concentration here at the surface or close to the surface and we have a temperature Ts at the surface. And the question we ask ourselves here is how does the vertical transfer of heat, mass and momentum relate to each other? So for heat, mass and momentum we have the diffusivities alpha, d and nu. We have diffusive flux according to these equations here. And we have transport coefficients h, k and f divided by 2. This is Fanning's friction factor. So let us compare the different transport rates. We have convective transport to the right, in this direction here, of momentum, heat and mass. And we also have vertical transport down 
and if you have laminar flow then that's essentially diffusion if we would have turbulent flow then it would be both convection and diffusion and we will come back to that later okay we have momentum heat and mass the convective transport of momentum is simply how many kilograms we have per second times the velocity the heat transport to the right well it's the how many kilograms we have per second times cp in kilojoule per kilogram and the temperature difference we always relate to a reference temperature and it's easiest here to have the temperature at the surface as our reference temperature and with mass we compare how much is moved in this direction here as what would have been transported if the concentration here would instead have been the con same concentration as the concentration at the wall okay the vertical transport we express using our transfer coefficients so for momentum we have fanning's friction factor here times rho v squared divided by 2 and for heat we have their heat transfer coefficient times the temperature difference and we have the mass transport as our mass transfer coefficient times the concentration difference and what we do in Reynolds analogy is that we assume that there is the same relation between transport of for example momentum and mass vertically as we have horizontally so horizontally that is to the right in the picture we have momentum transport m dot times v and we have mass transport large v dot times c minus c s so v dot here is the volume flux and vertically we have Fanning's friction factor here times rho v squared divided by 2 and we have the mass transfer coefficient times the concentration difference let's compare now for heat instead we have the momentum transport to the right by convection and the heat transport by convection and the vertical flux of momentum this is diffusive flux essentially if you have laminar flow and then the heat transfer coefficient times the temperature difference as you may note there are some similarities here we have m dot both here and there we have t minus ts both here and there we have c minus cs in both places here so we can simplify and what we end up with is this equation here f divided by 2 equals k divided by v equals h divided by rho cp v where we have our three transport coefficients f k and h the heat transfer coefficient now we can compare this with the chilton colburn analogy where we have instead jd equals jh equals f divided by 2 jd equals k divided by v the same fraction as up here but times schmidt to the power of two thirds so if schmidt equals one then we simply have k divided by v also in chilton colburn's analogy j h that's given by h divided by rho c p v times prantl to the power of th two thirds so if prantl equals one then we have the same thing as up here so if both schmidt equal one and prantl equal one then chilton colburn's analogy simply simplifies to Reynolds analogy k divided by v and h divided by rho cpv is often called Stanton number so k divided by v is called the Stanton number for mass and h divided by rho cpv is called the Stanton number for heat there are certain limitations to what we have said now and that's uh, Reynolds analogy assumes that we have laminar flow but actually, as I have hinted a bit, uh, this might be okay also for turbulent flow. And Reynolds analogy assumes Prantl equals Schmidt equals 1. So uh, if you have liquids, for example, then you have to use Chilton Colburn's analogy and sh you should not use Reynolds analogy. To summarize, we have gone through three different theoretical models that relate the diffusivity to the mass transfer coefficient. The two film theory where we assume that the only thing that happens in the film is diffusion. And that we simply get the mass transfer coefficient equals the diffusivity divided by the film thickness.
we will need a well-defined film thickness to use the two film theory. In the penetration theory, we assume that we have diffusion and convection in the film, but we will need a well-defined contact time to use this equation here. There is an alternative here, and that's if you have a well-defined distribution of contact times. What you see here is that k is a proportional to the square root of d for the penetration theory, while k is proportional to d in the two-film theory. This means that the mass transfer coefficient varies approximately as the diffusivity does with, for example, temperature and pressure, but only approximately because you have a delta here as well, the film thickness, and the film thickness might be influenced by things like viscosity, which is typically temperature dependent. In the boundary layer theory, we assume that we have diffusion and convection, just as in the penetration theory. But the geometry is a bit different. We here we have a flux along some kind of surface, and we're looking at the mass transport orthogonal to that flux. And the mass transfer coefficient k here is proportional to d to the power of two thirds, since we have d there and d there as well. Reynolds analogy and Chilton Copeland's analogy does not relate the mass transfer coefficient to the diffusivity. Instead, it relates the mass transfer coefficient to the heat transfer coefficient and the momentum transfer coefficient.